welcome back to my channel. So today from the title, as you can tell, I am going to be talking about owning a golden retriever. So I have a nine month old golden retriever. Me and my boyfriend got him six months ago. So we've had him for six whole months now. It's half a year. It's crazy. The time just flew by. Um, but he has golden retriever parents. We have learned a ton about taking care of them. So I wanted to hand off some tips and advice to anyone who wants to get a golden retriever or who just wants to know more about them. Uh, if you are going to be purchasing one in the future, I think it's super helpful to know what you're getting into before getting one because they are very high maintenance, high energy dogs. At least most of them are, especially if you're buying them as a puppy which we did, we bought ours when he was three months old. Um, so six months later, he's nine months. So yeah, um, we didn't know very much getting into it. We, you know, looked up some things. Uh, I, I have a friend who has two of them herself, so she gave me a lot of super helpful tips as well, but you never really know what you're getting into unless you do significant research and hear it from someone who actually has one. So that was a long intro. Let's get into what you need to know and things that you might need for your golden if you want to have a great experience owning one. So first things first, if you buy them as a puppy, they are going to be teething. They're going to need to be trained. They're going to need guidance, training, whether it's from you, formal training, um, they need, you know, a certain type of food. So I'm just going to tell you guys what we did, our experience. Um, disclaimer, I am not a golden expert. So if you guys have helpful tips and recommendations yourselves, uh, leave them down below in the comments because I always want to, you know, build on what I know. I want to be the best golden retriever mom that I can be. Uh, so I definitely don't know everything, obviously I'm still learning, um, but I feel like I'm a pretty good dog mom, uh, so you know, don't leave anything negative. Um, the place for comments where you might disagree with some things that I'm telling you. Doesn't mean I'm an expert, but what I don't want is for someone to tell me that I'm doing something completely wrong or I don't know what I'm doing or just anything negative. If it's constructive, great, please feel free to leave that down below. But if you're just gonna be a jerk about it, don't even leave it in comments because that's not why we're here. This is one of my channels about, this is a positive place. This is a place where we can welcome each other and you know discuss in a civilized manner. But anyway, I just wanted to put that out there. So yes, so when we bought our puppy, we didn't know the amount of biting he was going to do. We thought there was something wrong, not necessarily with him, but with us, like our training. Like, were we doing something wrong? Is this normal? <laughs> My dog is making his way into this room. So needy. The neediness I will talk about, um, but one thing at a time. So yes, the nipping, the biting is all normal. They're teething, so they're in pain, first of all, and when they're in pain, they want to lash out or bite something, anything to relieve the pain. They don't know really how to cope with it. Um, and, you know, they just are learning uh, how to behave. So what we found helpful with the biting, for the most part, I mean, it's going to have to run its course. We didn't really put a stop to it. He just kind of stopped when he got his teeth in. Um, but we pinched his nose right where the bridge is. You just apply a little bit of pressure until they whimper. You're, it's not cruel, trust me. You're not abusing your dog. Um, when they're in a pack, they learn from each other. And if you observe dogs playing, it can look rough. It can look pretty <laughs> crazy, but that's just, they're animals, that's how they act. Um, you're the alpha, so you have to establish that dominance. Or they're going to walk all over you and they're going to call the shots. So you need to set them in their place as soon as possible. So pinch the nose. That should make him stop because it kind of hurts him. 
and he's not going to want to do anything that's going to result in, you know, a little pinch. Also, you can do puppy timeouts, so if he's really getting out of control, put him in a corner with a gate or put him in his crate. Um, it's, it's your call whether you want the crate to be the disciplinary area or not. Um, we typically didn't use that. We just tried to use other methods to correct him or we would just get up and ignore him. Like, okay, you're going to be bitey and annoying and a jerk. We're not going to play anymore. So if he wants to play with us, he's just not going to be able to bite. So we found that to be helpful, but the biting did last a while. It lasted like three months, I think. So you just have to let it run its course. It's going to feel like it's never going to end, but trust me, we were in that position too. He will stop. Crate training. So you guys need to get a crate if you're going to crate train. We got one that had a divider inside so it could grow with him. So when we got this big huge crate, there was like a little divider inside, just enough for him to turn around. That's what they say. Um, there should only be enough room for him to be able to turn around inside of it. There shouldn't be a ton of room or else he's going to try to establish an area to be a bathroom area where it should just be sleeping quarters. He did defecate in his crate twice and that was because of separation anxiety, which was something I feared uh, was going to happen again and again. Um, but what we did to correct that was a crate and wait method. So we would put him in his crate, walk out of the room, once he stopped whining and yipping or doing whatever and was completely silent, we would go back in and reward him with a treat. And then you try to extend the time to be longer and longer so he establishes, okay, if I wait and I'm quiet in my crate and I behave, I get rewarded. They come back, they give me a treat, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the kind of relationship you want him to establish with his crate. It should be a positive place. It should be a place where he feels uh, comfortable and good. So put blankets in there, put toys in there, things for him to chew, nothing for him to possibly choke on or like strangle himself with. Be careful what toys you put in. Put in something that is durable, maybe like a really heavy duty chew toy, um, a stuffed animal that isn't going to be ripped open where he can choke on anything while you're gone. Um, but yeah, the crating works really well. We use it when we go somewhere and also at bedtime. So um, so if you want a good golden retriever, you probably should contain him in some sort of area, whether that's a crate or a designated area in your house where he can't destroy anything or uh, endanger himself, like no cords, no outlets. Uh, don't put anything in that room where he is for a period of time alone that could, you know, put him in danger. So because golden retrievers can be destructive, ours typically is good. He doesn't really chew on much other than his toys, but I've heard of horror stories where golden retrievers ruin things. So you just have to get to know your puppy. So toys, things to chew on, that goes hand in hand. He needs plenty of things and new things to chew on. So he loves his toys, he loves stuffed animals, he loves um, bones, like real bones, and he likes uh, like the, the, chewy, the chewy type. I will insert pictures of some things throughout this video of what I'm talking about just to make things easier for you guys. Uh, there's something called a Benna bone, and it's like it looks like a, a wishbone. He loves it. It's super durable. He can chew in it, on it all day long, but if you have enough toys for him to chew on, even like puzzle toys are a great idea too, something to keep them occupied, they're typically not going to bother anything else. Um, if he does tend to grab something that isn't his, uh, nip it in the bud right away. Say, ah, 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 like make a, make a loud noise like, ah, nope, and he should get the message. <laughs> Mine was like, wait, what? Now, there is this thing called the pet corrector. We didn't start using this up until, until recently um, because he was starting to jump on people and he's getting bigger. So we have something that's called a pet corrector and it's essentially compressed air in a can and it makes a noise. It kind of sounds like an air, hot air balloon or something like that. It sounds like compressed air. Um, he hates that noise. It sounds kind of like fireworks, I guess, to him. Uh, 
but if he's doing anything that like is misbehaving, you just psh, do that and as soon as he does something right, reward him. Rewarding is key. If you want to train your dog, if you want him to listen to you, always uh, praise them and give them rewards like treats or something like that. Um, we have ours trained, uh, he does some tricks and stuff like that, but be consistent. Consistency is key. And you want to make sure everyone in your household is doing the same thing, commanding the same way. Uh, you want consistency all throughout your family so that the dog doesn't get confused. Next, uh, if you want to own a golden retriever, be prepared for the hair. The hair is no joke. The hair is there. <laughs> Every day, you could vacuum every single day and there will still be hair all over you, all over your bedding, all over your furniture, your food, your floors, everything. So I'm going to insert what we have here. It's this reusable lint roller thingy. So I just use this on upholstery, uh, the bedding, our clothes, and basically anything with material. Um, and, and then we have a Roomba that I run all the time because we have basically all hardwood floors. Um, but yeah, the hair is crazy. Uh, so if you don't like hair everywhere, you don't get this dog because they shed a ton. Like, a ton. Like, it gets in your- you don't know how it gets all over stuff, but like, you'll find it in your mouth and, and everything like that. But, um, yeah, if you're- if you're not, like, fond of just, like, having a messy house kind of. I mean, I try to clean as much as possible. I dust and everything like that, but there's always still going to be hair uh, for the rest of his days. So that's just something you have to get over if you want a golden retriever. Another thing that I didn't realize, they are very attention needy. He will follow or she will follow you from room to room. Sometimes they'll pick a specific person. Um, our golden retriever tends tends to follow me around the most, I think, but that might just be because I'm home more than my boyfriend. He works, you know, a full-time job. He works, you know, far away, so he's gone longer, so Ace will follow me from room to room to room. There is not a room I can go into that he's not going to follow me into. So if you do not like some company of any kind, these are not the dogs for you because if you try to close them out, they will whine, they will cry, they will make a scene. They just love attention. If you try to put him outside and you're not going to join him and play outside with him, he's probably going to sit by the door and wait for you to come out. So they're just not that independent. Uh, they love being around people. They're very much social dogs. They love to play with other dogs. They love kids. They love people. They just love being social. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you're not an active person, probably not the dog for you. They need a lot of exercise and Ace will just mull around the house, he'll pace. Even if he needs like excess energy worked out of him. Uh, so it's I take him on walks now every single day, sometimes twice a day, sometimes three times a day. It's crazy. But um, yeah, some days I'm just super tired, but like you just gotta walk them. You gotta get their energy out. You know, playing ball in the yard, taking them to parks, even doggy daycare if you can afford it is a great option because they need exercise and that's just their breed. So if you are a lazy person where you just don't have like the area that you live in to accommodate something like that, I think that's important to consider. Uh, and last but not least, uh, this is the last thing I'll really touch on because it's these are important. Things. There, there are little details that I could touch on, but this would be a super long video. It's probably already going to be long. But um, the grooming. So they are very high maintenance as far as taking care of them physically. They need baths. They need to be brushed. They need their ears clean. They need their nails trimmed. Uh, their paw pads need to be buffed if you're that extra. Um, but yeah, they are high maintenance. They need their nails done. They need their hair done. They are like the typical basic girl. <laughs> so if you're already getting your hair and nails done, your dog is included in that maintenance cri uh, criteria. But yeah, if you don't have the funds to spend on stuff like that, I don't know what to tell you, but uh, these dogs aren't for you. So yeah, um, budget for your dog. 
they need the right amount of food too. Um, food costs money. Uh, sometimes they need a, a really good diet. It depends on their system. We have ours on Purina One. And he likes it. He seems to like it a lot. He loves his food. But you can go as expensive as like Purina Pro Plan or some natural ways. You could go raw. Uh, we don't we don't think that's necessary, but um, definitely put aside funds. Uh, and another thing, I heard that they have health problems when they get older. Not all of them, but I heard they're prone to quite a bit. So start saving up once you get the, your golden retriever, just because uh, you know you don't know if there's going to be an emergency uh, medical situation, and then it costs a ton of money. So that's all I'm going to be talking about today. I hope it was helpful. Um, yeah, and if you guys have a golden retriever and if you have some helpful tips and advice for everyone here watching, please leave it down below. Like I said, nothing negative. Um, don't, uh, no bashing anyone's, you know, way of raising dogs. Everyone has a different opinion and to each their own as long as the dog is happy and healthy. I think whatever you do is fine as long as, you know, they're happy and healthy. But yeah, I hope this was super helpful for someone. I really, under honestly, I wish I would have known more going into it. Um, it. It's kind of been an adventure finding out. So yeah, I think if you can get more knowledge on these types of dogs, please do for your sake and for their sake. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys are having a great week so far. Until I see you guys in my next video. I, I apologize there's been so much dog content, honestly. Uh, don't worry, this isn't turning into like a dog channel or anything. I'm still going to have fashion, beauty, and everything like that. So stay tuned for more content to come. Bye, guys.